Hi, I'm Mark Cody. I work on aerodynamic and triathlon product at Specialized. And we're here in the SPCU Fit Studio, where we do a lot of work with our professional athletes, with our dealers on learning how to properly fit athletes, and where we kind of prototype and play around. And here, we're talking about aero on the cheap. So how do we make our bikes ourselves more aerodynamic without spending a crazy amount of money? It doesn't, it doesn't need to cost $10,000 to get a little bit faster. So three key ideas. The first thing you can do to get more aerodynamic on the bike is get aero bars and invest in working on that position. So anything that we can do from a road bike all the way to crazy aerodynamics bikes, about half of that benefit is just getting the body into more aerodynamic position over the front end of the bike. It's huge savings. Uh, in most cases, about a mile per hour of free speed, just investing in that. And it doesn't need to be more than $100 or $200 aero bar and some work with your fitter. So yes, it's an investment, but it saves a lot. Number two, aero helmet. Going from a road helmet that's just a Swiss cheese and the wind has to go all the way in through the nooks and crannies to a nice aerodynamic helmet might cost two or three hundred dollars but it has the same benefit as investing in the crazy aerodynamic frames or a new carbon clincher or tubular wheel set so maybe one tenth the cost of that frame or that wheel set will save you yet again probably about another half mile per hour of, of free speed that you'll get out of the road at the same effort so huge benefits and the third one pretty cheap but one of my one of my kind of favorite tricks is where do we put hydration? That's always the question. Where do I put hydration? Well, on a road bike, from a training perspective, it's easy to have it nice inside the triangle, the down tube and the C tube, and that's well and good for training. But if we're trying to get fast out in the race, completely remove those cages. The cage has the same aerodynamic drag as a cage end bottle. So that's pretty interesting. So take it off, and then where do I carry it? It's become very popular, and there's a good reason for it, to be putting a water bottle in between the aero bars or uh, like Craig Alexander's done, uh, Chris Lato have done at the Ironman distance races, zip tying a bottle cage underneath the saddle out back. This is a good reserve rack location for the water bottle. And then the second place being, you know, and this doesn't need to be on a shiv, this is equally as reasonable on an LA or anything with your clip on arrow bars, putting a bottle cage up in between the arrow bars. From an aerodynamic standpoint, what this does is as your hands are right here, airflow in between the arms swirls in here and just kind of churns around, there's a lot of drag there. And filling that void with the water bottle doesn't increase drag at all, it actually decreases the drag of the complete system. So you get a little bit faster, you have a good place to grab a bottle from an aid station, keep it right here, take sips as you need to. And this can be done with you know three zip ties up here, a couple zip ties back there for a bottle cage. Super, super low cost, and yet has huge benefits. A water bottle on a down tube, might be five watts, might be a tenth through a quarter mile per hour of loss of speed, carrying it down there, putting it in these more aerodynamic locations, much faster. So there's three things that you can do to make your bikes faster. And if you do it in a clean way and really work on being comfortable on the bike, setting up as clean and, and as smooth as possible, the wind will like you, it'll be your friend, you'll get a couple extra miles per hour for free.